Good morning, Titans. Today is Friday, December 6th, and you're watching Titan TV. I'm Matt. And I'm Seth. Tomorrow marks the 72nd anniversary of Pearl Harbor. Before 9-11, this was one of the largest attacks on U.S. soil. Jonathan sat down with the widow of a man who was in Hawaii at the time and another man who joined the military because of the attack. Saturday, December 7th marks the 72nd annual Pearl Harbor Day. Millions of people will remember and honor those who were at the attack on Pearl Harbor. I sat down with the widow of a World War II veteran who was at Pearl Harbor during the attack and also a World War II veteran who enlisted because of this fatal day. Kelly knew that there was going to be a war and what was probably going through his mind that morning was reading the comics. It wasn't about a war, it wasn't about a cowardly attack. He was on deck reading um, the comics and um, he said he kept hearing planes come over. And he said they kept getting closer and closer, but they were coming in from the wrong direction. And he said he looked up and saw the rising sun, and he said, oh, crap. And he immediately went to his battle station, and uh, that was about the time the first bomb uh, was dropped and the Honolulu did take a hit. They were trying to pull out and um, a torpedo went under the ship and hit the one next to it and then they had to pull back in and then they were hit but it did not penetrate the inner hull. He said it was pure hell. He said he had never been so scared in all of his life. Well, whenever, when I heard about Pearl Harbor, it was actually, I was in a small school. We didn't have television. We had radios and seldom listened to the radio. When I got to school on, on the next day, I, I found, found out that Pearl Harbor had been attacked. And so a lot of us boys got on a pickup truck and went into town to volunteer. We were too young, so we were sent home. I had four, I had three brothers already in the army, and I was the youngest. And they were married and had a kid, one each. And I was the youngest, and I was single. I didn't, so, so and, and at that time, patriotism was a little bit more important than it is now. But I had to get in there and do it. You could start talking about December the 7th, and his memory was clear as a bell. Oh, he was in communications. And then later, after Pearl Harbor, he decided his battle station would never, ever, ever again be below the water line. This is Jonathan Luke with Tyne TV. Our very own Interact Club is working with Small World to give gifts to the less fortunate children. Bailey has more. Each year, the Angel Tree Program provides a way to give back to the community. I talked to Ms. Morton, the Interact Club advisor, to find out about its importance. Angel Tree is a program that the Centennial High School Interact Club is sponsoring. It's through a nonprofit organization called the Small World Angel Program. It serves needy families during the holidays by providing gifts to Frisco ISD families. We have assigned each person who has asked for an angel what they um, are supposed to get that kid, uh, products and stuff, and then we have also transport presents and stuff to the foundation. Students should participate in the Angel Tree program this year because they are really going to make a difference in a child's life and really brighten their holiday season. In our community, uh, some of us don't understand how fortunate we are, and I feel that we need to help those who are going through rough times and it just give them a good holiday season. Although the opportunity to give a gift to the Small World Foundation this year has ended, you can still donate and give to the Salvation Army until December 9th. This is Bailey Stone, Titan TV. The Computer Science Club is hosting the Hour of Code event. The Hour of Code is a nationwide computer science event that teaches basic computer science concepts to the average student, and anyone is welcome. 
The hour of code will be after school, 4.30 to 5.30, on Wednesday, December 11th, in Mr. Boxer's room, room A113. No extra supplies or any fancy stuff is needed. Participants only need to bring themselves. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, Centennial Theater Department will be performing A Christmas Carol tonight at 7 and tomorrow at 2 and 7 o'clock. Also going on this weekend is Mary Main Street. Hi, I'm Benjamin Broderick. I'm playing Ebenezer Scrooge in this year's production of A Christmas Carol. That's the story of Ebenezer Scrooge's uh, redemption over realizing the true meaning of Christmas. I had bundles of fun uh, finally being the lead. It's really enjoyable to serve uh, the rest of the cast in that way. And then it's running also on Friday and Saturday at 7 o'clock each night, also a 2 o'clock performance on Saturday. General admission is $10 and student tickets are $8. Please come and support your Titans. Two teenagers on a mission. This just isn't very enough. It's okay, Elon. We'll find the merriest street in Frisco. <laughs> Alright. To have the merriest day of the year. Coming tomorrow on Main Street, your Christmas story is about to begin. Featuring Vibe, Santa, Light Show, Live Reindeer, Lots of Food, Gingerbread House Contest, Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I wonder how much work goes into the setup. Kayla sheds some light. During the winter season, people come together to show their holiday spirit. One of the great ways is through lighting up Frisco Square. I talked to Jeff Tchaikovsky about the difficulties and joys of setting up the Frisco Light Show that takes place on Main Street each December. Back in 2001, we started our home display on Bryson in East Frisco. In 2004, we went animated. And after our YouTube video went viral in 2005, the city of Frisco and Frisco Square approached us and said, do you want to do a light display downtown Frisco? So we, of course, uh, talked to them and we said, yes, we'd be happy to. And now eight years later, this has become a Frisco tradition. How long does it take us to set everything up? It's actually a combination of myself, some helpers that I have, as well as a number of individuals from an outside company that actually physically installed lights in all these buildings. We start planning for the display in February and they start installing lights the last week of September. So it takes them about six to seven weeks to install everything that we need for the display. Our first light show at our house was in 2001 and the first computerized light show was in 2004. The first Christmas in the Square light show in Frisco Square was in 2006. The plan for our house in 2013 is actually to do a very small display. My wife and I are both Aggies and we donated the use of our display for one year to the Texas A&M University campus in College Station. It's currently being used on the University Chancellor's house just off of campus. In 2014, they'll be back bigger and better than ever here in Frisco. Well, it's really exciting to see not just the lights, but to see the look on people's faces, young and old. Frisco Square has over 600,000 people who come through every year to look at the display, and it's just really neat to put a smile on people's faces in this otherwise hectic holiday season. Hey Seth, did you go Black Friday shopping? No, but Emma and Jordan did. After we finish the turkey and give thanks for everything that we have, we go out to find a new American tradition, Black Friday. This year's Black Friday is even more hectic with stores opening up at 6 p.m. on Thursday instead of early morning Friday. This year, we're going to go out and try to brave the stores. The average person is expected to spend about $398 shopping on Black Friday. Not only are there huge sales, but also people are allowed to use coupons on this day. Americans spent over $11 billion shopping this Friday. Black Friday doesn't always take place in stores. 26% of Americans planned on shopping online on Thanksgiving Day. 
Not only do you get good deals in stores, but also online on Cyber Monday. This is Jordan with Titan TV. Hey Titans, I'm Aaliyah with your sports update. The week before Thanksgiving break, we experienced a tough matchup on the football field, but pushed on to put our best efforts out there with a defeat of 63-37 against South Oak Cliff. While in basketball, the Lady Titans and the Titans both dominated in the past week. The Lady Titans crushed Lake Dallas with a score of 53-23. The Titans also defeated Rowlett 63-58, and JB prevailed as well with a score of 50-45. In other news, tennis is one district for the fall season. Well, we were undefeated for two years in district. I mean, that's a pretty big feat in my opinion because I've been on this team for a long time and I felt like it was really important that we finally filled that up and filled that gap that we had been missing with our goal. Uh, we went all the way to regionals after losing area but still moving on to Highland Park. Uh, and then we lost a really close, well-fought match to Texas High after beating, I think, North Dallas in the first round. So we did really well. Uh, we did the farthest that we've ever gone before. So I, I thought it was extremely successful for our team. Well, I tell you what, first of all, I just want to say that this probably out of all the years that I've coached, this has been uh, one of the most remarkable teams to work with. Um, I call them the Titan Fighters. Uh, we, this year, we were not clearly better than a lot of our opponents, but yet it seems like every single time we figured out a way to win. And uh, it was just totally a team effort. Um, our guys' team was very strong. Uh, we knew going in, girls' team. Uh, didn't have near as much experience going in, but they ended up winning some incredible matches for our team. So we ended up 14 and five. We advanced to the area tournament, lost to Highland Park, so we got second in area, and then went on to regional, where we made it to the regional semifinals, furthest uh, Titan team has ever gone. So it was just absolutely an amazing year for us. You know, as far as the future of Titan tennis goes, um, I, I see great things happening. This team did an excellent job of setting a precedent of, of what it takes to win. And so because of that, uh, I think in the years to come, uh, we're gonna look back at this year and go, wow, that's when it started. Expectation for spring tennis, uh, which is our next season, um, is definitely to meet the standards held by the fall season. So we wanna be very successful as well. And we wanna go far as we can. And um, yeah, just to win our matches and make sure that we represent Centennial well. Mine is to do better than I did in the fall because I feel I could have done a lot better and I don't know I just get to show that I could be better than I played last season I suppose. This is Race Titan TV. That's it for this week's episode of Titan TV. Have a great weekend Titans.